Hallelujah. Proverbs 1 and 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of your father and do not forsake the law of your mother. Proverbs 22 and 6, I'll just read this one verse to you. It says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you again today for your word. Lord, I thank you for your blessings, God, your anointing, for your strength today, God. Lord, I ask you, Father, Lord, to anoint me. Lord, I'm just, just a man. Lord, I stand here empty, Lord, and waiting for you to fill my mouth and speak through me today, God. And I ask you, Father, Lord, to anoint me, Lord. Let your word come forth, God, that your people be strengthened and encouraged today. And I ask you, dear Lord Jesus, Lord, let your word change a life today, God. Hallelujah. I could do nothing on my own, Lord. It's all about you, Lord. And we give you all praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Reading a few verses. Let me read you another one there. Now I got you sitting back down. It says, Proverbs 20 and 7 says, The righteous man walks in his integrity, and his children are blessed after him. Hallelujah. Obviously, today is Father's Day, and we want to talk a little bit about fathers. And, and I talked about this earlier. I kind of covered this a little bit uh, previously. You know that fathers, um, Father's Day is not always easy for everybody. Uh, sometimes I was blessed. I had a really good father. He was my best friend. That's not always the case with a lot of people. Sometimes as fathers, we, well, on Father's Day, we have failed sometimes in, in, in our efforts and, uh, uh, and, and, and being fathers, and we go through things, and sometimes we feel bad on these days because we maybe have, have missed on some things. Uh, I am blessed that just this year uh, I had some situations, I won't go into the details, but I was able to get some wounds healed, some things in my own past, that, some hurts that I had caused to, 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 to fix these hurts and to get, uh, to get, to get you know, forgiveness for things that where I had made some mistakes. And not always that happens. Sometimes when we have these days, it's tough days. But I want to talk today about not just the fathers of earthly fathers, but I want to talk about our heavenly father. Uh, as we go into the scripture today, I want to I want to uh, be more focused about him than anything else because the reality is, is man will let you down. I have let people down. I have let my children down. Uh, most of you know my story, my testimony. Man, I started off running for God at a young age and was trying to live as good as I could. And man, life come my way. Situations and circumstances beyond my control. Man, you know, sometimes when chaos comes into your life, you don't always do things right. Brother Q, we don't always make good decisions. Sometimes we make the worst decisions. Sometimes we're mad at the wrong ones. Sometimes we mad at people, and sometimes we get mad at God. And I made the mistake of being mad at God, and I spent a lot of years angry with God. Started down that path of drugs. Started down that path of getting high and selling and, and drinking and partying and, and living a lasciviousness life. And if you don't know what that is, just, it's just sexually inappropriate. Doing things that I shouldn't have been doing. Living chaos. I'm not the only one that has lived that kind of life. I got people in this very room. You've been going through life and sometimes chaos comes around. Let me just go on and remind you right now. Mankind sometimes will let you down. And sometimes you're the one doing the letting down because we're human. But we have a heavenly father that does not ever leave you. That never forsakes you. That has faith in you when, when no one else will have faith in you. That will trust in you. That has given us some words of instructions and, and encouragement. As I read these, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he won't depart from it. That's things that we should be doing, men, as, as fathers. Uh, even in Ephesians, it says, You fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in, in the training and admonition of the Lord. Uh, we shouldn't be provoking our kids. We shouldn't be uh, doing things in this situation, but sometimes we do. And sometimes it's been done to us. A righteous man walks in his integrity. And sometimes we have not always been the one showing an example of integrity. It says, and his children are blessed after him. And sometimes... Our children struggle, and some of us are the children, are the cause of some of that previous struggle in life. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of your father, and do not forsake the law of your mother. These are all great scriptures to help us. 
But I want to tell you a story today and a story that most of us in this room is going to know. And I'm going to try not to be real long because I know that uh, some of you got here really early. And uh, so I, you know, I try not to preach too long, maybe two, three hours. We're going to see who's paying attention. Brother Q looked up then all of a sudden. He's like, mm-hmm. Hey, hallelujah, hallelujah. But I want to preach to you on this thought about a good father, a good father. I want to tell you a story about a good father. Now, how many have heard the story of a prodigal son, the prodigal son? Uh, you've heard that story, some of us. If you don't know the story, it's about a, a father. He was a wealthy father, and he had two sons. And, and the younger of the two sons, he, he cried out to his dad. He says, Dad, you know, he says, I don't want to have to wait for my inheritance till you're gone. I, I, you know, give me my portion now. And he convinced his father to go ahead and to give him his portion of the inheritance now. And the Bible says that he wasn't long. He gathered all of his stuff up, and he went away. And the Bible says that he went off into a far country, and the other brother stayed. The other brother continued working at his father and working as far as the business went. He stayed faithful doing everything that the father had uh, wanted him to do. But that younger son went off, and the Bible says, in riotous living. And in case y'all don't know what that looks like, he like down at the honky-tonk. He down there boot scooting, boogieing. He down there partying it up. He getting some of the strongest, probably, wine or whatever they had. He was drinking. Later on in scripture, we find his brother said he was out wasting his money on women. So he was acting just like most of us have acted, just like I told you I have done. And he went out, and the Bible said that there was a famine coming in the land, and it didn't take long. Y'all ever heard the saying, easy come? See, y'all heard it, I knew. Easy come, easy go. That easy money that has a young man his father gave to him, man, he was parting it up. Living like a king, but all of a sudden everything changed in the land and a famine come in. Things got expensive. Kind of like things are expensive now. Times, you know, it's amazing. Time just keeps going round and round. Things just keep happening. Cost of living got high. It wasn't long. All that party and lifestyle, he was out of money. Most of us have done just like that. We have partied and we have done whatever. And Next thing you know, when the money is gone, the fun ain't near as fun as it was. And he said he attached himself to a, a citizen of that country and he was out feeding the swine. He was feeding the hogs and the pigs and said he was just about to eat the slop of these pigs, the husk and the pods and the, 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 the leftovers that was given to the Because pigs will eat anything. Man, you get some old hogs, they will eat the worst. or the, They will eat anything. And here he was, hungry. Used to be in the king's house. Used to be a wealthy young man. Used to have everything. And he found himself hungry and at the bottom of the barrel. And the Bible said he was just about to start eating on the pig's food. And he come to himself. Now this story, I'm, I'm telling you about the product, but he's not who I'm wanting to talk about today. I'm going to talk about his father. But I got, you, got to help you to understand where this son was to really understand about how good the father was. Because the son had took everything that the father had worked a lifetime for, saved and, and worked hard and done everything he had done, and he given to his son, and he just wasted it. And he, he found himself down. And the Bible said he come to himself, and he began to say, even the hired servants in my father's house is eating better than this. Even, even the hired servants are living better than I'm living. They still got shoes on their feet. They still have clothes on their back. Even the hired servants, he said, have better than this. And he began to make his way back home. And here's the part of the story where I want to get into this, this good father. This young man had been gone for a long time. So long that his father had counted him as dead. He hadn't heard from him. He, he probably heard for a while somebody said, yeah, I seen him down here doing this, and he was doing that, and man, he was over here, he was over there, and I'm sure all kind of stuff come back to him. But it had gotten so bad, I don't believe he had heard from him in so long that the father says later that he thought he was dead. He doesn't give up hope, but he never give up the love. I want to tell you today that that's what a good father is like. That's what your heavenly father is like, though, though we have wasted what has been so preciously spilt, the blood of Christ. 
that was, was shed on Calvary for our salvation, for grace and for mercy, for his love that he so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him should not have to perish but would have everlasting life. That blood was paid and spilt for you and I and we have oftentimes lived in riotous living and we have wasted all that the Father has spent. And I don't know about you, but I found myself down in the bottom of the barrel. I found myself to the place where I never dreamed I would be. I found myself to where I didn't even think that it was possible for me to go. It's not who I was. It's who I become. It's not who I was born to be. But I become someone different than I was intended to be. And many times we find ourselves in this situation and we begin to get in our mind and we think, wow, this is my only option. He was about to eat the pig slop. Stuff that no other human wanted to eat. And he come to himself. And he didn't even think about trying to become the son. He just wanted to become a servant in his father's house. And this is where the story starts off about this father. The Bible says this young man began to come back. It said the father was standing at the door and he was looking. How many days had this father been looking for his son to come over the horizon? How many day after day has he been worried about his son? Maybe this particular father might have been praying about his son. Well, yeah, I still got another son over here that's doing well, and he's doing great, and I'm thankful for him. But my heart is torn over the one that could be dead. My, I'm thankful for the one that stayed here doing all the right things, and, and that is fantastic. But my heart is broken, and I yearn after the one that I can't see any longer, that I'm concerned about, that's been gone for so long. My heart yearns. And day after day, he looked. But yet one day, he looked. And hope began to come down the road. He began to look and he probably, I don't know, maybe if he was old enough to be like me, didn't see good. I don't know if he had to have somebody say, hey, is that my boy? I don't know what way, but he looked and the Bible said in a far off, he seen him. And he began to run into him. Kind of like one of them Hallmark movies. Y'all seen when two people come running? You know, I believe dad come running with his arms open wide. Probably junior come running up, dad, I'm so sorry. He began to tell his dad how sorry he was. I could just hear the conversation. I've I've messed up. I'm so sorry. I know I'm not worthy to be candid. Your son, I'm just hungry and I'm, I'm broken. I'm tired. I don't know which way to go. My life is a mess. I could hear the conversation. And the father didn't, because of real love, he didn't try to put it over his head. He didn't try to make him feel bad. He just loved him. He just gave him grace. And he began to rejoice and he began to call for the service to bring a ring and put on his finger. Why? Because the ring significant was very significant to the fact of his identity. You're not just a hired servant. You're, you're not just a, a mistake. You're not just a, a problem child that I'm having to deal with. He put a ring on his finger, the ring and significance, the insignia of his household, showing that you are important. And that I have restored you. You have walked away, but he has restored him. He said, put a robe around him. He said, somebody go kill one of the calves. It's time to have a party. We fixing that. We fixing to rejoice because my son, he said, which was dead, which was lost, has now been returned and restored. And he got so happy. I'm talking about a good father that didn't, didn't, wasn't worried about where he had been, wasn't worried about the money that was gone, wasn't worried about all the things he had done wrong, didn't ask him for a list of things that he needed to repent over. He just said, I'm glad you're home, son. I'm glad you're home. I've been worried about you. Can I tell you that God is waiting for us to come running back into his arms? In our minds, sometimes we get to thinking that, oh, we can't make it back. We'll never do it. Things are too hard. I've done too much. I've went too far. But we have a good father. It says you've been running long enough. We have a good father that says, I love you. Just come back and let me restore you and let me protect you. Because see, part of that restoration was provision and protection. He not only provided for him, put a ring on his finger, give him his identity back, put sandals on his feet, say he didn't have no shoes. Bring some sandals for my boy. He needs some shoes. Put a robe on him. He's home. 
He didn't say, hey, somebody wash him up. He smells like he's been in a pig pen. He said, put the robe on him. He said, because I want you to walk back to the house and everybody know that my son is back. God is waiting. He's waiting for us just to say, okay, Lord, I've tried my way so long and my way is not working. And the Lord's running with his arms open. I got you. I got you. I got you. And then the Bible says that as they begin to make merry and, and singing and dancing and playing music, that the oldest son that was out in the field, he began to say, what's going on? That sounds like they're celebrating. And somebody comes running excited. Oh, your brother is back. He's come back and your father, he's, he's killed the calf and we're having a party. And he got upset. And he wouldn't go in. And the Bible says that the father come back out to him. It says, and he arose and came to his father, but when he, uh, no, I'm a little further down. Let me see. It says, but his brother was angry and would not go in. Therefore, his father came out and pleaded with him, that same father. So I want to tell you, this father had not just one prodigal son, but he had two. He had one prodigal son, and the prodigal is just the rebellious, uh, you've went away. He had another son that stayed, but he was never happy. He had another son that wanted to uh, always be compared to his brother. He had another son that felt his life was not uh, like it should be. He had another son that he had to go fetch. See, sometimes even when we do the right things, we have the worst attitude. We can be doing things right and, and not show the love of the father to anyone else, not show compassion, not show uh, forgiveness, not show love. And one more time, that father had to come out and rescue another prodigal son, stuck in his own anger and grief. What about me? I've been here. It's what he started rehearsing to that. I've been here the whole time. Have I not worked in the fields? Have I not done all these things? Have I not done everything? And the father said, all I have is yours. I didn't stop giving you anything. Nothing I'm doing is taking away from you. It doesn't mean that I don't still have love for those that have messed up. There's people on churches all over town on Sunday. They look down on so many people and they say, ah, look at how they do. A bunch of addicts, a bunch of this, a bunch of junkies, a bunch of this. Oh, they have all these titles they want to put on people. And the father is trying to realize that they may have been gone out and in the field with the hogs and living a lascivious life, but you are sitting there in the father's house all the time and you are just as lost. He had two prodigal sons. He had a prodigal son that didn't have the love of the father. I'm talking about a good father. I'm talking about as I read that scripture that shows a righteous path, that leads the righteous path. You know what happens? It says that when you do that, that when the children are, are grown, they'll come back to it. It'll never leave them. The prodigal son went away, but he come back. And the prodigal son that never left, still having to learn the lesson of love and kindness and forgiveness. Hallelujah. Today I'm talking about a good father that loves you, that cares about you, that has been standing at the door waiting for you to return. And today is the day to come back. Today is the day. Say, so you know what, Lord? What do I have to lose? I've tried everything else. Lord, I'm coming home. And the Lord is not trying to bring you back into the home of shame, but he wants to bring you back into the home of love and of a body that wants to celebrate you and love you. Hallelujah. The father said to his son, he said, you are, you are always with me and all that I have is yours, but it was right that we should make merry and be glad for your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. I want to tell you today is a day to celebrate. If someone wants to challenge life and say, you know what, I, I've been running long enough. I've been doing all these things long enough. I have tried everything else. But today is the day of change. And God wants to give you an opportunity to change everything. And he's saying, if you would just come back, I'm standing at the door with my arms open. I can't change anything for you. I can only preach this word to you. I can only uh, share this spirit that God wants to share with you today. You're not here by accident. You're by here, here by divine purpose. The Lord brought you here because he says, I'm standing at the door waiting for you because I love you and I don't care what you've done. and I don't care how many mistakes you've made. 
I've never stopped loving you. And I want to celebrate you. Will you let God celebrate you today? Come on, everybody stand with me. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Come on, stand. Will you let God celebrate with you today? Say, what do you mean, preacher? I mean it like this. The Lord is waiting for you. And he wants you to leave from where you are and come back home where he is. We've got an altar down here. We, we right across the front of this little podium say, well, it just looks like carpet to me. It is in the natural. But I'll tell you, sometimes the hardest place you'll ever journey from is from where you're standing right now to come down here and kneel down and say, Lord, I'm coming home. Forgive me. Lord, I'm coming home. I need you. Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, forgive me. Help me, God. I can't. I don't have all the answers. I don't know what to do. I want to encourage you today. Come home. Come home. The altar is open. Come home. Hallelujah.